Omnipuses. Omohomini amnipuses. Omohomini amnipuses. Omohomini amnipuses. Omohomini amnipuses. Thank you. 
sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the children I gave. Tis summer, the children I gave. The dogs ripe and the meadows in the bloom.
Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you representatives of the faculty, staff, and students of the University of Louisville.
Please rise and join us in welcoming the Presidential Platform Party. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Army and Air Force ROTC and the singing of the national anthem led by the Collegiate Chorale and the Cardinal Marching Band. seated. I am honored to present to you the chair of the Board of Trustees of the University of Louisville, Mr. David Grissom. Thank you. Distinguished guests, Governor Bevan, distinguished city, state, and federal officials, delegates of sister institutions of higher education, faculty, students, staff, alumni, and friends of the university. As chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the University of Louisville, I am happy, happy to welcome each of you to the inaugural ceremony of Neely Ben Deputy as the 18th president of the University of Louisville. We are deeply honored by your presence. At this time, I invite some dedicated individuals associated with our university to please stand and be recognized. First of all, G Governor Matt Bevan. <laughs> Members of the General Assembly and Kentucky's elected officials.
Members of the Council on Post-Secondary Education. I know Bob King is here today. Bob, welcome. <laughs> Members of the Board of Trustees of the University of Louisville. <laughs> the Academic and Administrative Officers of the University. Don't be timid. <laughs> Members of the faculty, staff, and student senates. <laughs> Members of the university faculty. <laughs> Members of the board of overseers and the foundation board of directors. Mayor Greg Fisher and members of the Louisville Metro Council. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor, did you hear the horn when you stood up like that? Your, your timing is impeccable. <laughs> Presidents and administrators from Kentucky colleges and universities. and delegates from sister institutions of higher education. <laughs> Welcome to each of you and thank you for joining us for this wonderful occasion. At this time, I would like to invite to the podium a long-serving professor of English former chair of the Faculty Senate, former dean of the Graduate School of Interdisciplinary Studies, and 10 years as a vice provost for graduate affairs and academic affairs, who is now serving as our executive vice president and provost, Dr. Beth Bain. Hey, everybody. I feel like we're truly blessed today with the rains having held off. Should I wait for the train? Um, in addition to these previously, uh, gr the groups that were previously recognized, I would like to acknowledge all the university alumni in attendance. Would you please stand? <laughs> How about the Louisville staff? Could you stand? And now the reason we're all here, would all the students who are present stand? <laughs> now I'm especially pleased to introduce the family of President Ben Deputy. Her husband, Dr. Ben Cat Ben Deputy, would you stand? Their daughter and son-in-law, Sarishi Vendapudi and Kyle Ladd. And finally, but most importantly, her mother, Padma Tipavala Jala. As the university provost, I've been asked a bit um, to talk a bit about today's ceremony the words inauguration, installation, and investiture are all used to mark the celebrations welcoming a new president. They are often used interchangeably, but as those of you who've had me in class know, I am a precise one. So as a professor of English, I feel compelled to note the distinctions between these terms. Inauguration is the broadest of the terms. It represents all the events that take place in celebration of today's ceremony. So, for instance, we had some ice cream socials, we had um, a town gown event at the Speed on Tuesday, those are all part of the inauguration. Today's formal ceremony, what we're standing and doing right this moment, is known as the investiture ceremony. Finally, the installation 
names the actual moment when the chair of the Board of Trustees will place the presidential medallion around Dr. Bendapudi's neck, and he installs her with the responsibilities and rights of being the president of the University of Louisville. Inaugurations, while they happen every four years in DC, they are rare events in a history of an institution like the University of Louisville. The faculty, administration, and many of our staff and student senators are today wearing the academic clothes we've inherited from the medieval university. When caps, gowns, and hoods were used to keep professors and students warm while they studied in chilly churches and uh, drafty monasteries. On such a muggy day as today, we don't really need the strange garments to keep us warm. But we are wearing our academic regalia in order to um, emphasize the scholarly significance and the traditions of today's investiture and to honor Dr. Bendapudi's installment as our 18th president. With these clothes, we're not only hot, we are recognizing that while Dr. Bendapudi is new to our university, the traditions important to institutions of higher learning, such as ours, are ancient and enduring, as is our mission to discover, create, and preserve knowledge, and then to transmit that knowledge to each new generation of students. Finally, as the chief academic officer, the provost is the academic leader of the deans, the faculty, and our student body. On their behalf, I welcome President Ben Deputy to the University of Louisville as our leader. She is a breath of fresh air, open, transparent, very energetic, and very optimistic. And she has restored the university's optimism. And I hope the community's faith in us. We are convinced she will help the University of Louisville fulfill its mission to pursue excellence and inclusiveness in all of our work through our teaching and learning, through our research and scholarship, and through our service to communities, both local and global. President Ben Deputy insists that we all call her Neely. And so I will end my comments simply by saying, Neely, the deans, the faculty, and especially our students are glad you are here to lead us. I now would like to invite a special guest of President Ben Deputy's to deliver a few remarks. <clears throat> Our guest is one of only 41 active duty four-star generals in the United States Uniformed Services and only one of 14 four-star generals in the U.S. Army. He became commander of the United States Army Pacific on April 30th of 2016. He is a graduate of West Point and the University of Virginia, where he received a Master's of Education degree in Instructional Technology. Please help me welcome the commander of the United States Army Pacific, General Robert Brown. Thank you. Well, good afternoon and thank you so much. What an honor to be here at this special event. Uh, and I feel very privileged. Uh, I just have to tell you right off the bat, what an amazing uh, decision, a fantastic choice uh, by the University of Louisville that the, you could not have made a better choice because I have seen uh, Dr. Ben Deputy in action, inspiring and leading students, leaders, and uh, she's a transformational, inspirational leader. And I'm so proud to be here uh, as a friend and a former teammate where we worked together uh, and I'm really honored. Thank you so much for allowing me this chance. I'd like to uh, recognize our distinguished guests and uh, Governor uh, Bevan, thank you so much for being here and all our distinguished guests. I won't go through again, uh, but I will highlight uh, Venkat, thanks for your tremendous support uh, through uh, uh, Neely's career and uh, all you've done, your amazing support. And you have to thank mom uh, because uh, you must be so proud and rightly so. Well, uh, Neely's story is inspiring. 
uh, no doubt growing up in southern India and relocating to the United States to pursue her doctorate and then giving so much back uh, to her commitment to higher education. And uh, as I mentioned, I came uh, to know uh, Dr. Ben Deputy when I was uh, uh, in a job commanding our uh, unit at Fort Leavenworth that is responsible for education uh, for the Army. We developed Army University to improve education within the Army and partner with outside universities uh, to improve that education. And then also, a uh, very important thing, leadership development. Uh, very important across uh, all professions, but, but certainly in the military as well. And I uh, was very fortunate uh, to work with Dr. Ben Deputy and then to watch her inspire our young leaders and to give us incredibly innovative and inspirational ideas across the board. She helped uh, establish a master's program at University of Kansas uh, in organizational leadership that our officers that were taking courses at Fort Leavenworth, our Commander General Staff College, could get a master's from the University of Kansas. And it required a flexibility that, quite honestly, uh, wasn't there before and had failed a, a whole bunch of times, but nearly made it happen. Uh, that incredible energy, that visionary leadership, uh, she made it happen. It really has benefited uh, our leaders. Uh, we had uh, Army leader exchanges. In fact, we have uh, young Army leaders come here to the University of Louisville for, for five weeks uh, for a leadership program and many other universities. And again, the inspiration in that uh, nearly had so much to do with and was by far the most popular of many, many speakers and inspirational leaders, CEOs, presidents, military, you know, it didn't matter. Uh, the number one most popular was Dr. Ben Deputy, and uh, she stayed in touch with our leaders and has helped them develop as leaders because she cares so much about students and people and development, no doubt about it. We had another uh, program where we brought in young leaders from across the Army who were doing very well, and we'd present them with tough challenges and, and help us solve our future problems, get the, the, uh, the best and brightest minds together. And again, uh, Dr. Ben Deputy was uh, absolutely fantastic in supporting us in that and helping develop uh, those incredible leaders uh, who will uh, really make a huge difference in maintaining peace and stability throughout the world. So we're, ju we're just so, so grateful. Neely has an incredible reputation as a trusted educator, uh, and I have no doubt that her tenure here at uh, UofL uh, will only further that legacy. She's uh, the right leader at the right time uh, for this institution, if I can be so bold to say that, uh, but uh, it's just obvious and you're, you're so fortunate and I can see already her enthusiasm is spreading throughout the university. You can feel it, it's exciting. Uh, it doesn't surprise me one bit. So uh, to a real inspirational leader, uh, thank you for the honor. Just say a few words uh, about my friend and, uh, and uh, again, so grateful for all her mentorship and help and uh, what a tremendous choice Congratulations, Neely, really uh, fantastic, uh, well-deserved. And thank you again for the honor to attend this ceremony. Uh, Army strong and go Cards. <laughs> we're, we're so fortunate to have so many friends of the University of Louisville, along with General Brown. I know we have Congressman John Yarmuth. Is he here? Uh, Congressman Yarmuth is here. We want to make sure and also recognize Congressman Yarmuth. We're fortunate to have so many people in this community, in this state, in this country, and throughout the world who are supporters, who are alumni of the University of Louisville. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, ask that uh, Chairman Grissom would come back on uh, to the podium, make a few remarks, and present the presidential medallion to Dr. Ben Deputy. Thank you. General Brown, thank you very much for being here today, and thank you for your service and you're going to be a tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> On April the 3rd of this year, Neely Bendaputi became the 18th president of the University of Louisville. The Board of Trustees first met Dr. Bendaputi during the presidential search earlier this year. She came highly recommended by many individuals who pointed to her as a rising star in academia. Once we met her, we knew we had found our president. Of course, the trustees and the search committee were impressed with her academic credentials, we were equally impressed with her administrative ability, her fundraising, and her friend raising efforts, which I'm sure many of you have run into already. We appreciated her involvement in her city, her academic field, and the business community. But what set her apart then, and what is even more evident today, is her enthusiasm and her energy. Dr. Ben Deputy has taken this campus by storm. In just under five months, she has done the following. One, 
She's rejuvenated and re-energized our campus, earning praise from students, faculty, staff for her enthusiasm, her transparency, and her positive energy. She has built bridges with key constituents, including donors, alumni, and the local business community. She has established outstanding relationships with local, state, and national government leaders. She has collaborated with presidents of Kentucky's other universities, as well as Jefferson County Public Schools and others, which will help improve education at all levels in our community and the Commonwealth. She has begun restructuring the administration and building a strong leadership team that is positioning the university for future success. She has tackled tough issues such as the budget and the SACS accreditation in an open, honest, and decisive way. Most importantly, she has restored excitement and a sense of optimism to this university. Our students, our faculty, our staff, all are eager to follow her as we climb to even greater heights. Dr. Bendapudi, on behalf of the entire university community, we are all thrilled that you are here. Will you join me at the podium? Now this is going to be the hardest part of the ceremony because I'm not, I'm technology challenged. Don't you be laughing out there. How do you get this thing out? Okay, okay, help me Mark. Mike. All right, now I've got to read this a little bit first. And then I'll put it right here. Go ahead. The Minerva Medallion is an appropriate symbol for the University of Louisville and particularly for this president, Dr. Ben Deputy. Minerva is most commonly known as the Roman goddess of wisdom. She serves as an example for thousands of students who attend the university in hope of gaining the knowledge and insight that will benefit them for the rest of their lives. She also is known as the goddess of trade, the arts, medicine, poetry, so many areas that the Roman poet Ovid called her, quote, a goddess of a thousand works. Finally, Minerva is remembered as the goddess of strategy and war, symbolizing fearlessness and strength. This combination of traits was unique among all the gods, and it mirrors the strengths, strengths possessed by our president, Dr. Ben Deputy. Dr. Ben Deputy, by the authority of the Board of Trustees of the University of Louisville, I invest you with this medallion of the seal of the University of Louisville and bestow upon you all the rights, privileges, powers, and responsibilities of the presidency of the University of Louisville. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. B. Neely Ben Deputy, the 18th president of the University of Louisville. Thank you. Thank you. You want to step up to the right? Thank step you. up to the right there. And you can come. Good afternoon, everybody. I am quite overwhelmed by this incredible gathering, and that's really an understatement. Thank you for being here. Thank you so, so, so very much. I, I want to begin by expressing my very sincere gratitude to Chairman Grissom and the entire Board of Trustees for giving me this opportunity to serve as the 18th president of the University of Louisville this is a singular honor and one that I will hold sacred, and I will try every single day to the best of my ability to serve this university and every single constituent thereof. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to work with a very, very strong academic and administrative leadership team alongside our faculty senate chair, Dr. Krista Wallace-Boez, Staff Senate Chair John Smith, and Student Government President Jonathan Fuller. Together we will advance the university as one team. Now whatever I am, wherever I am, whatever the role, whatever any given day brings, the one constant in my life is my deep love and gratitude for my family. First, in our nearly 35 years of married life, my husband, Dr. Venkat Bendapudi, has always been my greatest source of strength and support, 
joy, and comfort, as I know I clearly have been for him. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> now, there's one thing that Venkat and I are absolutely sure of, and it is this. No matter what we do in our lives, however we may contribute in many different ways, our greatest contribution to this world will always be our incredible daughter, Srisha. We are grateful that the lovability and livability of Louisville have convinced Sirisha and our wonderful son-in-law, Kyle Ladd, to move here. I am fortunate, yes, to Louisville. I'm fortunate and blessed that my mother Padma, my role model and my inspiration is here, as are Venkat's sister, Jaya Palakodeti, and brother-in-law, Dr. Ratna Palakodeti. Thank you for being here. My gratitude also to my chief of staff, Michael Wade Smith, who agreed to move here with me and Venkat to continuing the important work of uplifting individuals and communities through education. My very, very sincere thanks to all of you, my team, my colleagues in Gramwire Hall. You are the A team. It's hard to believe we were perfect strangers just four months ago. You've made us feel so welcome and I'm grateful to you. Governor Bevin, Mayor Fisher, Representative Yarmouth, Senator Stivers, elected officials, luminaries of Louisville and the Commonwealth, thank you so very much for your help and support and encouragement these past four months. General Brown, the opportunity to help you, sir, in your role as the first president of Army University it showed me how important higher education is to our country and put the challenges of our enterprise in perspective. I am beyond grateful that you took the time to be here today. To my academic colleagues and counterparts who made time to be here from across the Commonwealth and the country, thank you. I am particularly gratified today that my Ohio State Buckeye family is here, my Kansas Jayhawk family is here, and from the ACC, the Syracuse Orange family is here. I am deeply, deeply grateful. You inspire me. And I'm so glad to have your support, your friendship, in our common pursuit of leveraging the transformative power of higher education. I have said since my very first interview with the search committee, and they will attest to this, that I believe the University of Louisville has strong bones, a great foundation. After serving in this role for four months, I'm ready to tell you, I can confirm without a shadow of a doubt that is true. My initial assessment was spot on. Our faculty are inspiring. Not only are they committed researchers, they go the extra mile and invest time to build meaningful, deep, transformative relationships with our students. Our staff work so tirelessly to make this place run. And not everybody recognizes that not just this university, but any other university, we would not work without these staff. Our staff are the connective tissue. They are the glue that holds this university together. And now, our students. Our students, you truly are the reason we exist. And I have to tell you, you are among the best I have ever seen anywhere I have been. I love you. I do. It's not in the script, but I cannot resist. <laughs> we have an increasingly diverse student body. They grow as leaders in their time here, and they go on to change the world. Our alumni and friends, thank you. You are so passionate and committed to this university. We have what it takes to build on this foundation in our next era of growth. We are nothing if not resilient. We are also adaptable. This university was born in 1798 out of the conviction of a citizenry that higher education enhances and enriches lives. Over the years and through many, many changes and challenges, we have been charged by the state to be the premier Metropolitan Research University, one that is dedicated to the creation, 
dedication, dissemination, and application of knowledge. I'd like to take a few minutes to comment on our mission and on our very unique urban metropolitan identity. At the UFL, we're very proud of the strength of our teaching and learning mission. Today, we educate the traditional college student, the transfer student, the adult learner. We are accessible in person, online, and in hybrid formats. We're exploring ways to bring students to campus and to bring campus to students. We are committed to lifelong learning, and we know there's much more we can do to keep students and alumni and the citizenry engaged with us in this quest. We are determined to help students integrate their learning in the classroom with their experiences outside of it. General Brown, as I think of our challenges in the academic enterprise today, it's only appropriate that I refer to the old Army leadership credo of be, no, do. With your permission, I'll reframe it just a little bit for our conversation today. Bear with me. Leadership requires knowing. Leadership requires being. And leadership requires doing. That we know. Some universities, they do an amazing part on the knowing part of the mission. But that knowledge is sometimes in a vacuum. I hate to say it, but I've seen graduates of top-notch business schools that could actually walk you through all of the nuances of financial modeling, but I wouldn't trust them to run a lemonade stand. <laughs> now, when it comes to doing, again, we have some universities that teach their students how to do specific things extremely well, but they pass on skills without also equipping their students with the ability to retool as necessary. The area that we must address that I think we can uniquely claim at the University of Louisville is combining the knowing and the doing with a sincere commitment to being. We cannot forget that in addition to teaching frameworks and providing tools, we must invest in what our students are and who they will become. In the words of Yates, we must recognize that education is not about filling a pail, it's about lighting a fire. We must ask ourselves, how are we helping our students ignite that love of learning and the spirit of service? We are also very, very proud to be a Carnegie-designated highest research university. The R1 status puts us in the company of a very small group of about 115 doctoral granting universities with the highest research activity across the nation. This designation also emphasizes the breadth of the questions we investigate and the creativity and the scholarship that we produce. In today's environment, we are all very quick to realize the importance of the professional schools. But it's very, very important today to also emphasize the study of the arts and the humanities, the basic and the applied sciences as well. We need to investigate all the frontiers of human knowledge. Why, you might ask, when change is so very rapid, when every problem is complex and multifactorial, we really don't know where the solutions will come from. A few years ago, if someone said they were studying Chinese or Arabic, their family and friends would probably be worried whether they'd get a job. Today, we can't get enough graduates with these skills. Or think about the relevance of the age-old philosophical debates. In the world of avatars and virtual reality, where storylines can be contrived any way you please, doesn't that somehow remind you that we might also be in Plato's allegory of the cave, looking at the shadows? Who knows? Just today, I was looking at all the conversations happening at the UFL campus, and I loved seeing that there's a talk today about Schrodinger's cat. And you might say, does that matter? Yes. If it weren't for that insight, you wouldn't have your phones on which you are recording this message, right? The wave and the particle. Our education mission and our research mission become more poignant, become more urgent, become more meaningful because of our distinctive metropolitan identity. We are not distinct from Louisville, our living laboratory. We are in the city, we are off the city. Because of the breadth of offerings of Louisville, from the arts to athletics, bourbon and derby, food and festivals, 
music and museums, the parks and the zoo, we appreciate and we enjoy the benefits of living in a big city. But we also see the challenges that American cities face today in educational and income inequities, rising costs of housing and healthcare, alienation and isolation. To stay true to the original Louisville promise, the creativity and scholarship of our faculty, our staff and our students must have an impact right here in our neighborhood. It doesn't mean we don't have lofty aspirations of national and international renown. We certainly do. But our hope is that our work has ripple effects. The solutions we find here make a difference in Louisville, echo throughout the Commonwealth, to the country and to the world. This has already been done by our researchers. We have a long legacy of practitioners who made global impacts. We are the university that pioneered the first artificial heart transplant in 2001 and made the first connection between microbiota in the gut and neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's in 2016. And just a couple of weeks ago, if you turned on any news at all, you learned that the latest breakthroughs in helping paralyzed individuals gain mobility was right here, born at the University of Louisville. Now, yes. Because I need to make the speech shorter, the contributions to society from our arts and humanities and the professional schools, I urge you to look up. And I have to throw this in. Did you know that the happy birthday song that you all sing originated here in Louisville? Just want to let you know. We want our students to tackle the great challenges of our time. So we must ask of them more than simply, what is your major? We've got to stop. We've got to ask our researchers more than just what is your discipline. We need to reframe these questions. Let us ask instead, where do you want to make a difference? What aspect of human life will you change? Will you improve by focusing your talents and your energy? How will you change your neighborhood, your city, your world? Let me highlight a few examples where Louisville provides the perfect playground for bright minds to play and experiment and connect. Are you interested in improving human well-being? You could study the genetic or the non-genetic determinants of disease. Recently, and thanks to the Christina Lee Christie Brown Enviome Institute that we announced just a few weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, our scholars are able to investigate questions such as, what is the impact of urban green spaces on diabetes or heart disease? Do you have friends who work in the auto or advanced manufacturing space? Or perhaps they're part of the supply chain and transportation industry. We need our students and faculty to ask, where are the next advances in renewable energy? What are the possibilities of additive manufacturing? Are you moved to address the systemic inequities in our communities and institutions? Why don't you help us bridge the digital divide, the very real digital divide that keeps those who need opportunities the most, the farthest away from the jobs of today and tomorrow? Perhaps your calling is to work with children. You could be an educator, a social worker, a scientist dedicated to pediatrics in the Novak Center. Some of you may wish to serve those who volunteer to protect our nation. What are the needs of the men and women who are stationed at Fort Knox, at Fort Campbell, or the Bluegrass Depot? How can we as a university improve the lives of servicemen and women and their families? How can we keep these veterans right here in Louisville and the Commonwealth and give them the opportunity to continue to serve us in new and different roles? Or perhaps you wish to tackle the ultimate human challenge, how to age well. Growing old, they say, is not for wimps, but it sure beats the alternative. In Louisville, given the unique confluence of industry and academic institutions and nonprofit organizations, we really are the capital of the longevity economy as it has been dubbed. 
How will you ensure that people live not just longer lives, but healthier, happier, more fulfilled, more connected lives? These problems and more await our collective investigation and passion. It is now my distinct honor to share with you that this last pro problem that I told you about of aging well will have great support behind it thanks to a very, very, very generous gift by the Traeger family and the Republic Bank. We are grateful to the family matriarch, Mrs. Traeger, who is here with her children and her grandchildren for their very generous support that will allow us to examine these issues in the Traeger Institute for Optimal Aging. Details will follow, but please give them a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I must say, this is one awesome inauguration present. Thank you, I appreciate you. The questions I posed today were not meant to exclude or limit, but to focus our efforts around challenges that have the capacity to positively impact the whole world with the resources we have here at the university. These and other big questions will not and indeed cannot be answered by one discipline or one approach. The world is changing too fast for that. We have moved from the telegram to Instagram. Tweets from birds to tweets from bots. Rain clouds to data clouds. What I would like to tell you is that we are organized at the University of Louisville into 12 different schools and colleges. The contributions of each and every one of these will be needed to address the challenges of our times. They will take the scientist's mind, the artist's eye, the poet's voice, the musician's rhythm, the engineer's design, the ethics, the law, the business of the marketplace, and the healing touch of the caring professions. These questions are part of what we can and we will do to improve lives. Let me just take a few moments about how we will conduct ourselves. Over the past four months, I've listened to many, many faculty and staff and students, alumni, key constituencies, people you see on the stage here, and ask them what they want from the leadership of this university. They recognize that the University of Louisville is the economic engine for Louisville, and that Louisville is the economic engine for the Commonwealth, and economic engine for the state. And therefore, they're rooting for us to be great. They're rooting us for us to be moral. I'd like to share with you some principles that I have garnered during my time here. These are the cardinal principles, if you will. Sorry, I just could not resist. This is an acronym, but these are my words and they attempt my, um, they are my attempt to reflect back to you what I've heard from you. C, let us be a university that is a community of care. Care for self, care for one another as cardinals, and care for the community well beyond as part of the human family. We're a community, not just a collection of individuals. We're a community, we're not just buildings connected by an HVAC system, as a friend of mine says. A, accountability. Accountability to the team, to the community. We keep our promises. We own up to mistakes. We are accountable. R, respect, irrespective of position. We respect each other's humanity and dignity, no matter what our positions in the organization might be. We also respect our right to differing and conflicting positions on issues. A quote I read somewhere, and I'll paraphrase it, says, we will be a place that prepares students for ideas, not protects students from ideas. D, diversity and inclusion. We celebrate diversity of thought, of life experiences, of perspectives. Our state motto says it all, united we stand. We want everybody in the richness of their many unique and intersecting identities to feel loved and included in the cardinal fold. I, integrity and transparency. We will be true to our mission, 
of an urban research university. Integrity is our collective commitment to make decisions with the best interests of the university in mind and to share the decision-making rationale and the outcomes transparently. N, noble purpose. Each of us will identify for ourselves the ways in which we will make a difference. We know we must solve the problems of access and affordability to give everybody a chance to find and pursue their own noble purpose. A, agility. We will recognize that ch things change, but we recognize also that when they do, we can and must change things as well. We know that when the adaptation within an organization does not keep pace with the adaptation in the environment, the environment will win, the organization will not. L, leadership. We recognize that management is a, not a, is a position, but leadership is not just a position, it's an activity. We will all behave as owners of the University of Louisville because we are. Faculty, staff, and students, and alumni, we are UFL cannot just be a hashtag or a slogan. It is our declaration of leadership and ownership. There you have it, the cardinal principles. There will not be a quiz right now, but in the coming days and months and years, we will work together to examine how these principles shape the questions we tackle and the solutions we propose. I've shared with many of you my goal for our community of knowledge to ask more and bigger questions and to seek to answer them. I've also shared the principles that will guide how we go about solving these problems within the UFL context. Now, in the shadow of the thinker, I want you to think with me big, bold thoughts, daring to imagine what would happen if we succeed, which we must and which we will. Think about a Louisville where every single graduate of our public school system could have college credit before they even start in a college degree program. Thank you, Marty Polio, for engaging in this discussion with me. Think about a Louisville where every single student of our community colleges know that they could count on going to the UFL when they graduate, if they make the grades and not worry about the financial constraints. Thank you, Ty Handy, for helping me think of ways to make this work. Think about a Louisville where every individual with some college experience and lots of life experience knows that there is a path for them to come back to the UFL and finish up and get the college degree. Thank you, Alice Houston, for always reminding me of this issue. Think, think about a UFL, where every student out there knows that they can count not just on one, but a whole set of mentors deeply invested in the success of their mentees and willing to do the work of aiding these young minds in their pursuit of greatness. Think about a UFL where every student knows that whatever they study, they would be business partners, nonprofit partners, community partners, ready to offer internships and training and education to launch them on their jobs and their careers. Think about a UFL where every staff member knew there would be opportunities for professional development and lifelong learning. Think about a UFL where every single faculty member could count on excellence among their colleagues in the teaching, research, and service missions of our university. Think about a UFL that is a partner in the life of the city and of the state and revitalizes every corner and every neighborhood. Think about a UFL that is able to attract talent from all over the world, but does not ever forget its responsibility to studiously and rigorously cultivate talent in our own backyard. Think about a UFL where every citizen of the Commonwealth, not just UFL graduates, every citizen decides that their hearts are big enough. Definitely support and encourage your alma mater but please support and encourage the University of Louisville. This is where your home is. These are the thoughts, the dreams, the inspiration that keeps me motivated. 
we will become a great place to learn, a great place to work, and a great place to invest. Because, and this is important, because we will be a place that celebrates diversity, fosters equity, and strives for inclusion. We know we won't get there overnight. And indeed, I also know we'll never get to a point where we say, oh, let's stop. We did it. We're great enough. The pursuit of excellence is its own reward. So let me conclude with this. Students, I challenge you to make the most of your time here to make this for you a great place to learn. Faculty and staff, I sincerely thank you for all you've done and challenge you to co-create and maintain a culture that makes this a great place to work. And all of you who are here, I implore you and challenge you to step up and invest in us. We need you today. There's no question in my mind that at the University of Louisville, our best days, our greatest days are ahead of us. Thank you for the opportunity of a lifetime. And as I wrap up now, by now you know the rules, I will count up to three, and on the count of three, be prepared to throw your L's and to yell go cards. Are you ready? On one, two, three, go cards! Thank you so very much, I'm honored. Thank you, Madam President. Perhaps, perhaps I say that again. Thank you, Madam President. This ceremony marks the beginning of an exciting new era at the University of Louisville. Thank you, all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for sharing in this ceremony today and this occasion with us. Please stand and join the faculty brass and collegiate chorale in the singing of our alma mater. concludes the inauguration ceremony. After the platform party recessional, please join us for an inauguration reception behind Grawmeyer Hall and the Natural Science Lawn. Thank you. <laughs>